Hello and welcome to another episode of Path of Exile University and this is for the upcoming Expedition League 3.15 and we are going to talk about life in solo cell phone with Nugian. So it's going to be solo cell phone hardcore, talk about a lot of survival and stuff like that. So uh, I'll be stepping back a little bit and letting our amazing co-teacher Nugian teach you. Am I live? Hello? You are live. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Nugi. I play PoE mainly on SSF Hardcore. Even when all these pretentious SSF guys went trade, you know, stayed in a stayed in SSF. <clears throat> so, uh, how do I click? Oh, here. Aha! First of all, um, since we're talking about SSF, I was thinking, well, people probably want to know if SSF is for them. That that's that's what I was thinking. That's the main that's the main question. Are we, are we, are, is, is that for you? Like, you, you want to listen to me because you want to know, do I want to play SSF as well? Because if you already play in SSF, then, I don't know, you probably already know about me and sis. <laughs> um, right, so, let's see here. So, do you have what it takes? Well, first of all, you need to realize that you are all alone. In the sense that, well, if you come from Trade League, or if you come from Hardcore or whatever, like if you've ever played these kind of games with any kind of trade in it, the game is vastly different. It's vastly different. The shops are not open. If you find yourself struggling in the middle, like what, through an act or something, and you normally like, oh my god, I'm getting one shot, or like I'm almost dying and you just buy a gold rim, that option is not available to you. So things things tend to change just a little bit. Okay. So first thing you need to know about SSF is, as I've written here, everything is going to be harder and is going to take longer. And the reason why it's going to be harder and take longer is because you don't have the availability of, you know, easy access to the tools that you need. And tools are everything in SSF, right? If you wanna, if you wanna get to the next map, you need to find the next map. If you wanna find the, you know, the right item from the right boss, well, you need to go and kill the right boss and do all that on your own. If you have a build that needs a specific unique, well, it's not available unless you go and find it. So there's a lot about SSF. If you're Okay, so that, that's that's like the that's like the you're kind of alone kind of thing. So the the next the next little point I made here, which is if your only pleasure is from beating the end game, the SSF journey might not be as appealing. And so what I mean by that is that there are a lot there's going to be a lot of time as a new SSF player where you're going to get to a point where you feel like you're stuck. And some people don't like being stuck. Right? It's it's what makes them frustrated or not enjoy the game or give up. Um and well if 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 you're that kind of guy, don't play SSF. Like SSF is by and large self-imposed difficulty for the purpose of mating making your, your life worse. Well, in, in, in like in a progression type of sense, because it's better because Everything has more meaning. It has more... Um, there's more weight to everything you do because everything matters and everything is in your hands. And that is amazing. Right, so when I say that beating the endgame is, is rarely what's going to be your main goal in SSF, um, that's what I mean. So... If you're, if it's like, if you think you are going to go and kill Maven at your first SSF adventure, if you're not like a meta gamer already, um, and that's that's like what you think you're gonna do, I mean, sometimes that just doesn't happen. You might die on the way. I think uh, if we if we go to like the third point here, which is failure is learning, I think that's like the key thing about SSF, and. And failure is learning turns into knowledge is power because from failure comes knowledge. And if there is any person right now, I would say is a good example of someone approaching SSF in a way 
Um, that embraces this, I would say it's Quinn, right? Because he keeps trying different builds. The journey is the important part, you know, of what he's doing, trying new things. And then he might have the failure at the end a lot of the times, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that he didn't beat the end game the first time or the second time or the third time. What matters is that it's a fun journey every time. And then the even better part is that getting getting to the getting there and then finally beating it with all this knowledge that you've accumulated over time just makes it so much better. So much better. Like the the the, the pleasure of, of finally beating it becomes so much more meaningful. So I think that is yeah, that, that's key. That's definitely key. So yeah, do you have what it takes? I mean, it's more time consuming. Um, you're alone. Uh, build variety is limited as well because creativity takes more effort. So if you like to go and you like playing slightly off meta builds and you generally do them on trade and you're like, oh, but that's not too difficult. I make them work every time. Remember that if you do that with buying like a few items or two, that sets you so much further ahead compared to um like the more traditional builds okay so creativity takes more effort if you find a cool build um know that you're uh, that getting gear for the build might be a whole journey in and of itself and if you fuck it up it can all be gone in an instant so the, the all gone in an instant is speaking towards what i play which is hardcore and on SSF, that is even more brutal because if you are searching for heist uniques and a couple gems, uh, you know, some some alternate gems and you need like uh, some betrayal rolls and maybe like a, a unique from Breach or whatever, that might take you a week or two before you actually get everything you have. You put everything together, you go in, you DC, or you fuck off and you die and all this effort on this one build where you were farming white maps for like three three days followed by heisting for the next three as well and then you die you have to be able to accept that that will be your life at some point and it sounds great for any one of you guys who are like oh I don't know if that's for me. Even guys, the thing is, if like the first time you get to like your red map and your red map is like beating you and you're trying to like just get through it, you that that part can be just as exciting where every single porcupine hits you for you know 50% of your life. That's just as exciting as being in a fight with Cirrus, in my opinion at least. And these are the things, and you will. The thing is, the exciting part is that this one red map that you entered might be your only one. Uh, and the only other option is for you to go back to like T8 or T9 and then struggling your way back up, right? So you're, you're constantly forced with going through obstacles that you might not want to and that you might not have the ability to go through. But you're going to take the chance anyways. But I, I I know it might not be the most selling part, but I really hope that listening to this and and if you can like feel the exciting excitement in my voice from all these encounters, that that gives you a sense of how exciting this actually can be. And getting out of your head that the only way of getting like of, of achieving anything of or of having fun is like the end of the journey. The SSF journey starts at level one and the fun starts at level one. I've had times where I would die, you know, in act six, like three times over. And, and I would feel, you know, so demoralized, but you know, it's, it's the game. And the fact that the fact that the, 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 the going through the acts can be just as exciting as going through the end, you know, that's, that's SSF for you. Right, so moving on. 
Picking your build. Now this becomes the first struggle that you have to go through here. Right, so what... What is a good SSF build? So I picked... I've picked two builds here next to each other for a very good reason. Right? And, and, and we call them the tried and true. Okay? The tried and true, some of the most iconic ones right now, I would say, would be like Steel Speedglad and Sis with his ED. Obviously, we also have like Slammers now, but like for the longest duration, I would say these have been holding true. Uh, they have been ho they have been holding true for longer than the slammers, um, but and I want to show like the the important part about both of these is they take a lot of boxes. Okay, durable, fast, nice, clear, good bosser. Okay, so this line can be set for bleed glad. We could say it for um, slammers as well. And what you then notice is that you go ed. And you know, and you notice that, well, I've ticked the same boxes. It's durable, it's fast, it's nice, clear, and it's good for bosses. If you can take all these boxes, boxes every time, your build will always be a success. This is not just an SSF thing, but it's important to know that on SSF, if you don't tick one of these boss boxes, you might feel that you're falling behind or you're not having a good time. Because you can't, there is, there isn't this like, uh, the, the, there isn't like a safety net of, oh, just buy the items you need of trade, right? If you have a build that needs like a unique or two or something, it might just fall through. So going for tried and true is, if it's your first adventure, generally the right thing. So the next thing, or the next little one, the third one here is that, well, if power is everything and you know that aura stacking is the most powerful thing, if you then try and like on trade, that can actually be a viable starter because you can just have a farming strat and a trading strat and you can just trade and farm your way into the gear without too much worry if you're smart. And... What that means is that, well, aura stacking can actually be a viable starter on trade, but if you do aura stacking on, on SSF in the current metagame, what you have to realize is that kind of build, and this is not, I'm, I'm not, this is, this might actually be even, um, kind of a, a hopeful spin on it. <laughs> like two weeks to farm the gear, get the gems, and then you can enjoy the game. And I, I don't, I don't think this is, um, an unreasonable amount of time and it's not just two weeks it's like two weeks eight hours a day if you want to do it faster you have to be incredibly efficient and then you get to play the game and then you get to start you know going through the ssf journey and you're not really embracing what ssf is offering you if you're trying to make aura stacking first because you're just sitting there farming the same things over and over and over again so we definitely put this in the not recommended box. Um, next point, you can and you, mo uh, and you most likely should respect over time uh, is also a thing here because, and I, this, this kind of holds true to everyone, even if it's not SSF, uh, because obviously certain builds uh, are not really viable early on. Uh, like, if you're a trickster, you're not going CI first. And even on trade, you don't go CI first. One thing to note here about respecking, because respecking in SSF and respecking in trade are two different things. Because at SSF, you need to have a little bit of thought. thought. Um, a good thing to understand is that you get around, I think you get like 2022. 20, could you correct me if I'm wrong here, Says, How many respec points do we get for free? Um, do you remember? I don't. Between it's 20 it's and around 20, right? Maybe a little bit more? It's a bit more, I think. Maybe, maybe yeah. it is 20. Oh, everyone's saying 20. Okay so, okay, so they're saying 20. And then you obviously, by that point, uh, you have some regrets as well. 
And you can also trade uh, through vendor recipes to regrets. Um, and Dave card. Yes. So a lot of the time, what you end up doing, I would say, is you regret a few times on your, even if you're doing like a very straightforward build, a lot of the time you will actually regret a little bit. So you're probably already down like five to 10. Um, and then if you are respecking into like a, some elaborate uh, CI build or some slightly off meta stuff that might require 40 regret points, um, that could actually take you a full day if you're not careful. Um, if your respec is happening not too far after you hit maps. So be careful of having like 40 regret, uh, regret points needed by like day two. It's okay for like day three or four, but definitely pre-plan your the way you um, are going to need regret points. Um, I would say anything around 20 to 30 uh, at early maps is okay, but even 30 can be a little bit annoying. So just know that. Um, now for a little bit of perspective of what, what I went through in terms of picking your build. Uh, as a new league in SSF. So I went with Reboot Sanctionate for the last league. It was a build that had never been done before. I mean, in the sense that it was a new skill. Um, and so the reason why I decided that this was an okay skill to go with is because... So we started off with running the numbers. I would say that for SSF, you kind of need to know whether or not your build will work. At least if you are not the type of person who wants to re-roll within day one or two. So the reason why we knew that Exanguinate was going to work is mostly from experience and through knowledge. And what I mean by that is that, so Exanguinate Reap. Um, we thought Reap would be a little bit better. The AoE did look better, uh, but the numbers were good. So just the DPS numbers, if you compare them to all the chaos dot, the cold dot, were on par, right? They were all on par, and I would say they were slightly ahead, but with the downside of being um, maintaining the damage was harder because of lower duration. But that was like just a slight variation compared to like normal dot builds, and so we th we said, okay, that's fine. And by knowing that it's not an elemental skill and it's physical, and physical doesn't get mitigated as much. So there are certain things that with experience that you will start noticing that you can go with the not the tried and true to begin with if you know that the shell that they inhabit is viable. And physical dot is a viable shell. It falls in with bleed glad. Bleed glad is strong because of similar reasons. If I had to say something for SSF for the next league, I would say that physical dot might actually be something you should be worried about going first. And I will I will tell you why right now. Physical dot in the next league might be might be getting hit quite hard because physical dot benefits from having some of the best um it, it benefits from having some of the best gems for dot multipliers or for multipliers in the game and they're godding multipliers the top end like control destruction brutality i can't see brutality not getting hit these are some of the things that are carrying these kind of builds uh, and making them such good uh, build starters and because you have like these four amazing uh, amazing um gems uh, they also work incredibly well on four links four and five links and that's something you also have to to uh, um, keep in mind is that 4 5 link viability is very good. It's why like Archmage can feel a little bit poopy early on and why Tabula for instance on a, on a, on a, uh, feels so good uh, to begin with on an Archmage build um, because of the multipliers are so high. And recognizing that and then knowing that okay I need a Tabula can be very beneficial depending on what build you pick. So again pre-planning your build in SSF is key. <laughs> So I went Exanguinate, um, I ended up going Exanguinate because it was the uh, it was the better like overall package with fast, clear, good bosser and everything. I would say Reap had the durable and good bosser. Um, 
but it wasn't very fast and it didn't have the greatest clear and because of the and that's what you get into with not knowing how the skill plays out but then we found exsanguinate and exsanguinate was like mm, very good bro steel in chat can we all agree that he looks very handsome and when he contemplate things very handsome Yep, good, 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 good. Another thing so, worth mentioning, Noogie, as well, is... Yes. I just sat down, but uh, did you mention having a backup skill in case a new skill is trash? Yes, that is actually a very good idea. Um, I would say Xangu like Reap Exsanguinate falls into this very nicely because um, you could go any kind of like bleed bonker on the... So I went Scion. So Scion and Gladiator were like the two builds of, of, of choice here for Reap Exsanguinate, in my opinion. And both of those had viable options of going going any kind of like slammer or any kind of bleed character. Uh so I was I was very certain that no matter what I had a I had a way out. In the end though I decided that um so what I fell into was the aura stacking trap. It wasn't really aura stacking, but it was alternate gems. I believe it was alternate wasn't it? no cluster gems or jewels. It was cluster jewels I fell into. Because scaling, for me, progression is gear. That is that is that is what I feel is progression, and I got to a point where I felt stuck in my gear progression because my gear progression for my for my physical dot build was cluster jewels, and I got into this point where well I need to heist for like three days, and so I thought. Do I want to heist for three days, or do I want to re-roll? I re-rolled. It's okay to re-roll. Whoops, can I go back? Yep, um, you can uh, left arrow key. Left arrow key. Oh, there we go. It's okay to re-roll. I went so in the good in the good uh, in the good spirit of so i'm i'm just gonna like ramble here a little bit because you know I, i'm just it's it's my experience and that's what you get. Um. So, I had found on my journey, uh, doing this Rebix engineering, because I got to like red maps and everything, and it was going fine, and I was doing ultimatums, even though they were a little bit, um, they're a little, little scary, you know, I was doing some conquerors, but I had found the, <clears throat> the bow, the fire bow, um, okay, what's that thing called from Breach? Uh, no. Nurture, or whatever it's called, I had that boss, oh. like, Yo, burning air looks pretty cool. Burning air is the new new vol skill, you know, like getting getting a little creative there. Yeah, uh, I should have listened to my own advice uh, and never start with burning burning builds on SSF. Just don't do it. They suffer from so many. There's like, okay, I will little caveat here. Uh, sometimes things, are, certain things are OP. Uh, this league. Uh, fire burst was OP. Uh, fire burst was just OP because uh, fire burst is one of those things that um, it takes every single box. It's fast. It's uh, you can make it durable. Um, gearing for it is so easy because you just six socket and go. And since we know that uh, certain builds benefit a lot from link burn builds, especially because there's like certain time of builds have like different like stages of where they feel good to where if you can't if a single burn doesn't like clear the screen it feels awful if you don't just burn once and walk away um it feels awful if you have ever had to go back and burn it again oh no that's just bad so i went with like the burn build on the bow and everything and it was like it was doable it kind of worked but the single target was ass so i decided that i am not having a good time re-roll again now, what I ended up playing was Lightning Strike. So Lightning Strike is actually a really good skill to talk about um, for SSF and going for let's what's my next line here? Um, right, we'll talk about that uh, in a little in a second here. So I went Lightning Strike, and Lightning Strike had a lot of things going for it. I had played it before, um, but it's actually so we've learned that it's a good skill over time because it does reasonable damage and there's a few reasons why it did um 
I think the main thing for Lightning Strike to be viable is, is a key uh, to SSF, and it's finding a strat that works uh, for whatever build you're going for. And the strat that works is Essences. The reason why Lightning Strike is viable in SSF right now is strictly because Haywog exists. Without Haywog, you cannot go Lightning Strike as a starter. It is not something you do. And the reason for that is because Essences creates weapons. And since any attack build, if you cannot get a good weapon, it's also why uh, the bleed build is pretty easy to do because axes are some of the easier ones to roll, right? Um, and so with Lightning Strike, you get uh, you just make a good foil. And now we had the new Betrayal as well, which is another thing. Like you can add another mod that's good, um, and it's just it's just really nice. Uh, you get like the good gear progression. Um, it farms fairly well and. Uh, it actually got, gets through X uh, pretty comfortable. So I went with that build and I played Raider. Um, picking picking the right ascendancy here, you know, is also something that ties into a good SSF build. Because they are not all equal. And this is what we go through here. So let's just go through getting through the X now. Okay? And we start with not every class is equal. So whenever you start the game and you pick your class, if you pick Marauder and you're not melee, uh, you any kind of spell, you will struggle. This is just simply how it is. You will struggle. There's a few things that help you from not struggling, which is if your build can use vendor recipes, most likely you'll have an easy time getting through. And that's because vendor recipes uh, relate to the, um, especially the flat damage on wands. Okay. The flat damage on wands will take you all the way to act 10 every time. Right? The moment you get them, so you are going to have a little bit of a crawl through act 1. Once act 1 is done, you will feel just as powerful as basically any other class out there because you will have maybe, maybe like, okay, maybe 5% less, but uh, you will now be in, uh, you'll probably be in the Templar, Templar area and everything is fine. If you're playing Marauder and you are slamming, well, then you're doing fine from start to finish. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend uh, getting the weapons, weapon vendor recipes for, for like, uh, like physical builds. They kind of like suck a bit, so not not the greatest. Um, but just a little bit of an anecdote here. Um, I had a guy who really wanted to go through... Um, this was in... What's that reason Badger uh, event? That was called... The Rebellion. Yes, the Rebellion. Right. So in Rebellion, I had a guy who was really struggling getting through Act 1. He had never done it in like faster than 55 minutes. Um, he was really trying to go fast. Uh, Rustic at 60 physical is not bad, I would say. It's fine. Uh, in a pinch, it definitely helps. But I would say just using Elks and currency and putting it on gear generally just gets you better gear. Uh, and then, I because you need, uh, just quickly on the Rustic Sash recipe, um, it's important that your item is rare because then you can use crafting from the bench. And the crafting from the bench plus a single roll is generally better uh, than the Rustic Sash recipe. Because Rustic Sash recipe is not really great unless you find a Regal. If you find a Regal, you just Regal that thing and then you craft on top. And then you can get your like attack speed or your flat uh, flat fizz or whatever. So getting the rare item is important because it allows you to put another craft on there. Um, but for this guy, um, my main things to help him through, and this really, this really rings true in SSF as well, is that you, you don't really want to be behind the power curve. And what I mean by that is that if you feel like you're struggling and going slow, farm more until your character is strong and it starts going fast again. A lot of people keep throwing themselves at content they shouldn't at the wrong time. So what I suggested is that instead of trying to run through a ship graveyard and running through uh, and just straight to Merville and getting to Merville, like just barely hitting 10, uh, not having your, uh, your, um, your wants and everything, that's just going to slow you down overall. So over gear, over gear, over gear and pick up things from the ground and sell to the vendor all the time. Um, 
did I actually... Yes, I, I wrote that down here. Pick up stuff you need for later. What do you need for later on SSF? Alterations. Uh, chance orbs, especially. Chance orbs? Guys. Chance orbs are like chaos orbs and alks into, on, on, in filter uh, importance uh, on SSF. I, I, early on, I have to stress, chance orbs are that important. Because they allow you to buy maps. So don't waste your chance orbs, save them as, as they are your babies. Okay? Chance orbs. They're important. But what, what I... So this also allows you to... If you have all the alterations you need, you'll get your flask rolled earlier. You'll uh, be able to buy all the gems off the vendor whenever your links are available. Okay? So pick up stuff. Pick blues for like the first like... Eight levels, like until Brutus or something, maybe even all the way to Merville, and then pick rares all the time. Every time you go back to the town, vendor, 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 vendor. Just fill your stash and vendor. You don't have to vendor when you don't have to go back to town when your when your inventory is full. You just fill your inventory, and then when you have to go back to town, you vendor everything. Okay, important. Um. Knowing where you can farm. So on SSF, like, the thing is, SSF exacerbates every single problem you have on trade. In terms of, like, how, how difficult it is to going through um, the content. So, knowing when you can farm is, is pretty crucial, right? So, taking a little bit of an extra time uh, right after Brutus. And, and just killing all the monsters in that area. It's, it's very dense, the monsters give good XP. And you'll... It, it's, a, it's a good place to at least... Hit 10. An important part of like, uh, let me just go to um, Path of X or in game here so I can like show you. So important part about uh, Prison Escape is because it allows you to get your to your first movement skill. So you want to hit 10 before you leave this area because then you have movement skills for the rest of the for the area here. Um, if you're feeling a little bit under leveled after Merville, like farm up the Southern Zone, farm up Riverways, so you're ready to go to Western Forest. Uh, all fields, crossroads sucks for farming, right? So, so knowing where you can like farm and like just take take an extra time and and, and farm that zone is really good. Um, not getting under level is obviously good. I mean, these like are, are key things that you just should know. Uh, SSF or like the normal stuff, anyways. Don't don't be under level. So, but SSF, it's just like remember, nobody's gonna help you if you fall behind. You just go back and farm up. Do we wisdom ID all rares? If you need, uh, that's okay. So this is again, planning, planning, planning. Know how many uh, transmute you need. So familiarize yourself with crafting bench of the cost, because a lot of things in the crafting bench cost transmutes um, and augments. Um, so depending on what you need and what you know you need going forward, you can just sell them without IDing, uh, and then once you have enough transmute, you can start IDing, and then it's up to you to figure out what's more important. Um, right. Uh, a little a little note here, uh, something that usually... Oh, we'll take a little break if there's ads. Oh. Yeah. It's fine, I do the same things as it happens all the time. We're just, we're just, uh, we're just buffering. No, it's, it's a fine spot to, uh, to, to take a little break. Um, have a cup of coffee, stretch, do a little stretch here. Ah, everyone stand up and, ah, oh, it's a good thing for SSF because it's going to be a long journey. So you need to be, oh, you need to be prepared. Oh, right. It's a grind. Grind needs a good working body. Ah. Remember, if you're hurting, your character is also hurting.
Just let me know I can continue. I will let you know. Uh, you can go. <clears throat> We're done? Okay, right. A uh, little, little, uh, little anecdote here. And again, this goes into... And I, I hope you guys are picking this up. How many times I go back to pre-planning is key. Because a thing, about, a thing about SSF is that you would rather have something before you need it. And it, it's really important to know that you want to have it before you need it because... Whenever you need it, and you have to go back and try and get it, um, it's not as easy as going on trade. So, when I when I write Aquablock Quarry Foothills, there's a very there's a very key part about this that that a little anecdote that it doesn't hold true for everyone, but it's build specific. Okay, so a lot of the builds I've made recently um, have needed like plus one fizz on its weapon right uh on like a, a scepter specifically i would like to get an opal scepter so so an opal scepter is like an eye level 60 it's a like fairly rare it's like it's actually a very rare drop as a base item and so yes it can drop an aqueduct but aqueduct is um it's too low level like it's 15 what is it no, it is 61. Okay, so it can drop it. Right. But it's 61. So even a rare only gets you 60, 63 eye level. So the eye level you need is 64. So Aqueduct actually slows your overall progression down, even though in the short term you might get more XP. Only thing here might be that your build might be insane for Aqueduct. And so therefore, you 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 say oh, I'm going to just farm that scepter and hope to find it a little bit later. But if there's not a big difference between Aqueduct and Quarry, um, or even Foothills, I would say if you're going for a 64 scepter in Foothills, you only get them of rares. And of rares is a little bit too... That's a little bit too rare um, in terms of them dropping. Uh, upside of Foothills is that it's a really good place for Delirium, I believe. So, if you need Delirium as well, well, then you would go Foothills. If you need to farm... Oh, uh, what is it that's really good in, um... In... In Quarry, is that... Is that Betrayal that's the best in Quarry? I think... I think Curse Betrayal is like... There. Betrayals... I don't know, I would never do Betrayal there, because you only get one. Right, but it, in a pinch, that can really help you. There are certain... There are certain times... Where it is so important to get betrayal that yeah. getting it early and forcing it is more important than anything else. It's up to you for whatever build you're doing to identify whether or not this is the case. And then quarry can be really good. A place I never see anyone farming, but what I farm sometimes is actually Ravage Square. Uh, and the reason is because if I need Opal Scepters. And I've found that this is just a nice place to farm Opal Scepters, like this here, because it's 64. So if I haven't gotten it, if I hadn't gotten it here, and I'm like, oh, I'm really, I'm just sick of everything, farming quarry and getting an opal, I'll progress and I'll just spend a little bit more time full clearing or clearing a lot on like Cathedral and Ravage Square um, to get my base item from there, right? But think about it this way. If you made it to maps and then you realize, oh, I need that scepter and you have to go back to farm these zones, how much you're gonna hate everything because that actually might take a few hours and spending a few hours not in maps when you just made it to maps really sucks so again pre-planning and finding things before you need them is key why 64 is because um it is oh shields is the same thing if especially if you harvest crafting for shield uh sis knows this better than i do how is it like the uh, item level it... 64 and 65 you can get like the highest stats that you want but the stat uh fire cold and lightning damage is extra chaos doesn't exist yes 
Uh, it's so you 66 can... plus. Yeah, so you can you can force them. You can force them without if hitting the wrong stat. Yep. Much more, much more easily. And re-rolling with harvest uh, nets you on these shields really good results. So understanding the different eye levels for items again on SSF is something you have to familiarize yourself with because you have to. It's it's all about finding out what is how do I spend the least amount of currency to get to the best results. Because remember, whenever you have to spend currency on something, you're the one picking the currency up. So if you have to spend twice as much currency, you have to pick up twice as much currency. You don't want to do that. Okay, that's like getting through the X. I, uh, if, if you want to like learn more about speedrunning and all that, I mean, there's so much stuff out there. I don't really feel like I want to go over like more the basic of like how to kill the egg boss and all that. I mean, it's the same in SSF as it is in in everything else. But the key here is to understanding what is the difference that you do when you're in SSF, you know, over farming, uh, pre planning, picking up stuff that you need for later and all that. Um, yes moving on exploring the so let's say you go you we've now made it through and into the x okay now progression learn the strategies right so there's a lot of different strategies that we're not going to go in depth now because it's not really this is the same if it's ssf it's the same if it's trade um going through the atlas every pretty much everyone does it almost the same um so generally just quickly it's you know go to the outer areas and then do the inner areas now um this is the important key after since you know how to do it now the 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 thing that alters on ssf is that the order at which you do certain things might be different <laughs> okay so pick regions that benefit you you might go on youtube and find like an atlas strategy that says this is the best region. This is tier zero, tier S. That's an F tier thing. Boo! Nobody likes to. Uh, nobody likes tier and end, man. Silver coins. What are those? P U in the garbage, right? Exotic goods. Ha <laughs> ha! I never found anything good. It's only five links, bro. If you're playing on SSF, a five link. Mmm. Right. Tier and end is like five. Like, it is like SSF heaven. Okay. Because exotic goods and trespassers, uh, they give you so many things that you need. They give you pretty common six links. They give a lot of five links. They give um, sextants and currency. And they give you a ton of silver coins. If you have a build that needs a prophecy or a silver coin, you want to pick this one immediately. If you want to progress... Um, through uh for meta crafting if meta crafting is very important for your build um you know uh for making weapons or wands or whatever it is you need to make out of the meta crafting with blocking and all that uh exotic goods is your friend because it gives you silver coins and if you have an abundance of silver coins you can just spam and it's so much more comfortable rather than you having to you know sit there and tediously do everything perfect or finding in delve which you can in delve um you can find the prophecy chains i think you can do it in blight as well but we'll get to blight later um in some fashion um right so pick zones that benefit you so i mentioned a few zones down here <clears throat> right going into the uh, atlas and SSF, remember you're alone and depending on what you focus on it will allow you to gear up your current build now but it'll uh but also what you will be able to do in the future like and what i mean by that is if you, if you have future goals of certain builds you should pre-plan that so that you don't need to go and set it up when you want to start swapping to that strategy right you might actually oh hold on uh there we go uh you might want to set up um inside job pretty early right you might not really care about the beasts even though beasts are great Beasts are really good on SSF. They give you tons of stuff that you want. So, um, getting a lot of Einhar missions and running them in these areas with extra beasts. I do. Are we? Are we all in? Is there a consensus that beast in Lyra is the best, no matter yes. what? Yes. Pretty good. much. Yeah. Great migration so, is like 
kind of cool, but Lyra is way too strong. Yeah, but they nerfed it as well, right? The whole, yeah. This whole stuff. Yeah. So Lyra's now, it, yeah, now it's like all about Lyra. So uh, I would even say you probably hoard your, your Einha missions until you have this set up. Uh, and you can hold them for quite a while because um, a lot of it is not... A lot of the stuff you get from Beast is not super necessary early on, but becomes really powerful once you start like going to like the next tier of gear with the meta crafting and all that and uh, and swapping a stat from one, like from suffix to prefix, prefix to suffix, or um, doing the, uh, what's it called when you like, you hold the blue one and then you can roll it and then uh, go blocking? back. What's it called? Blocking? No, not blocking. The one where you like, you have two good blue stats and then you copy it. Imprint, Imprint imprinting. Right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there's like, there's a lot of like slightly more end game stuff. So it's fine to like, hold on on using your Einha missions until that's done. And then you can just run your maps and get uh, a bunch of like high stuff early. So it kind of depends on like, what do you need first? Do you need heist first or do you need beast first, right? Is it the gear that you need to upgrade or is the closet jewels and stuff from heist that you need first, right? So that's important to understand. Um, like some people will like, some people would have you believe that, oh uh, yeah, uh, farming like it's like Valdo has been crazy for XP in the past. Uh, I think it's still pretty good. I'm not sure if it's best, but it's, it's, it's been really good for like XP and uh, currency, but the thing about that is if you're just accumulating this like XP and currency, but you're stuck on like the progression towards like heist or something else, right? It doesn't really matter that you got high level uh, unless you can somehow leverage that you got there. And then with your more powerful characters, because you have a, you could have a, you could have a character that is just really strong. Like with ED, for instance, farms through or like the chaos dot has historically found really fast through this area. So you could actually just go for an early power spike, have a lot of uh, extra currency lying around, and then you start progressing through with some of the other stuff of the Atlas. Because you, you know, you were a little behind, you just want to over level, gem levels matter a lot and stuff like that. So that's up to you, how you like to play it. Um, but a few things that I personally feel are really good is the Haywog Valdo combo for Betrayal. And I think Betrayal right now is one of the most important things to focus on early on because it gives you so much good stuff um, through recipes and the unveiled items right now are insane. Um, so that's definitely something you want to like have a focus on and setting up the proper Betrayal and all that. Uh, I really like running both Haywalk and getting intelligence gathering. And so what I like to do, this becomes a slightly more end game thing. But if you get intelligence gathering and amplified, and you've just run this zone to farm essences, it'll over time start increasing the intelligence in your um, syndicate and start making the sa uh, safe houses uh, pop. And then it would be uh, to do that here. you've set your safe houses up with test of loyalty. So you'll go to um, you'll go to like use your Jun mentions in Valdos Vest, get the people where they need to be, and then you start running Haywalk and you just farm Haywalk for essences, and it gives you tons of betrayal while giving you tons of essences because Haywalk gets essences. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. Then we talked about tier and ten for exotic goods, and another good thing in tier and ten is um, if your build needs say. Uh, I-86, this is specifically for um, farming out like CI gear and ES gear. Uh, 86 is an important eye level. Um, the Lightest Legion from Abyss here can be uh, very nice because it gives you plus three. Another thing for that can be going delving. If you want to do delve, you should definitely take Sulfide and Fusion. Um, if you know you need a, a breach item and you need some like delving stuff well go here right again it's like all about planning what does my build need that is the most important thing that you set your atlas up for it's what is you like what are you going to need not what does some tier guide on some youtube video uh tell you because they're just going to tell you the most profitable meta guide not what is actually going to be most beneficial for you um, it's really hard to completely mess up, but it can be time consuming to fix. And what I mean about that is that, again, planning is key. If you've spent all your refund points and you need to like uh, 
and you need to re rearrange like eight of these can suck. That that doesn't feel good because you have to do the maven chains uh, or very luckily find them as drops. Um, and doing doing these like maven chains is quite kind of time consuming. Um, especially if you're also trying to do other stuff that might not just be Atlas progressing. It's not the worst if you're running Haywork over and over and over again, but sometimes you can get stuck on like not finding the map, and especially early on, it can be kind of frustrating. Uh, one thing that's good about Valdor farming is Horizon Orbs, um, and I would say... I would say, like... Horizon Orbs is one of those, one of those things, Horizon and Harbinger and stuff like that, um, it's one of those things on SSF I would actually not remove from the filter early on. Those are the kind of splinters you want because they they give you such an... Um, they help you so much in your progression that picking up the splinter is worth your time. Right? So uh, identify what splinters you want to pick up. If you know that you're never going to pick up or you never want to like really farm tools, then don't pick up tool splinters. Like there's There are a lot of splinters that you don't need, but just... You need to make absolutely sure that you won't need it, right? <laughs> like, you'll, you'll find purists later on and stuff, and you can swap them if you really need them, but, yeah. Um... And I think that is... Pretty much, like, my... Early, like, SSF tips. For, like, getting you through and into the Atlas. Like, going beyond this point will require you to start doing, like, meta stuff, bossing stuff, all the stuff that is now available to you because you have a strong character, your atlas is created in a way that you like, and you followed, um, you know, the strategies, you have a good atlas strategy because you've listened to Carve, you've listened to us, uh, you've watched some streams, or you've just, you know, accumulated experience over time because you're the type of guy who just, you know, keeps learning. Um, yeah. I think, I think that is pretty good. Right, so here's a few miscellaneous items I want to go over. Guardians for Sana. Oh, it's the Guardians. I mean, we're going to have a questions and answer as well uh, for a lot of things that I might not have touched upon. So I wanted to keep that pretty open and some good time for that because there's probably going to be a lot of things that I don't really think about right now. Because the thing is, I've been playing SSF for so long that there are things that are just so second nature to me that it doesn't even recur to me that this is a thing that is an SSF specific thing right now. So I, so I think the question and answer for SSF will be very helpful. One thing here is, okay, never sync is a good filter and filter blade is great. But for SSF, you need to alter it to your needs. It is not, it is meant for trade. Know that. The thing that it highlights is meant for trade. Okay? You should hoard in SSF and a little bit more than you used to. Because remember, going back and picking up stuff that you want when you need it, uh, but you don't have it because you didn't pick it up, sucks. So, a little bit of pay to win here with the stash tabs. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't sell stuff and like vendor stuff and get rid of stuff. It's, like I hoard too much. Uh, but yeah, you should hoard a little bit more uh, than you used to. Vendor recipes can be a lifesaver. Uh, remember, you can like uh, 5 to 1 cluster duels. Remember that eye levels matter, so check for that. Uh, but it's a good way of getting rid of all the all the ones that you're never going to use. Um, influence for like uh, amulets and necks. Um, so if you find like an influenced iron ring, you can turn it into any kind of like resistance ring. If you find a um, any kind of amulet of a base you don't like, you can turn it into uh, an onyx with uh, three different uh, colors of gems and the vendor. It gives you a white amulet. Uh, also, if you need a specific corruption, you can do the same thing in SSF, um, right? You can like make a reasonable neck, corrupt it, and then you can make it white again by doing the vendor recipe. Uh, I know Sis showed me a really cool thing about getting... Um, influenced <clears throat> next with doing the corruption from alva i mean alva is insane as SS ssf as well here uh did i mention alva here uh if i didn't mention alva somewhere um if you're ever running out of maps alva a t16 map uh, and then make a map room is super good and this 
having high quantity in there as well super good for finding maps if you're starting to run out um it's on the screen i'm just blind then um don't be afraid to use your resources use your sextants if you're running out of maps if you're running low and you only have a couple red maps left smash all those damn sextants on there use your scarabs use everything just just start throwing things at it over time you'll start learning when you've thrown too much but just smash your currency at it seriously if you're if your character is strong enough to like to 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 take out some like um uh reflect mods and all that and you can you, you're feeling lucky you can corrupt that shit as well uh it's okay just just everything at it because you are it's 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 going to suck if you go down to yellow maps right also if you make it through these these insane maps when you're slightly like when you're like slightly do it's if it's slightly dodgy and you might not be completely ready it's fun this is the fun time because there's so much to gain and there's so much to lose and putting it on the line in the mapping uh, part of the game is fun and and once you start appreciating how like using like just using your resources and and taking chances along the way um you start appreciating ssf more when it's not just about running like just speed running to maven and sitting there with your 100 million one shot and maven disappears uh kind of I mean, for some people that's what you want to do but for the ssf experience i mean you can get there in the end but if if you if you hope to get to that point immediately you're probably gonna be out of luck right uh is there anything in blight that's good sis i mean yeah blight is really rewarding for just like prophecy currency in general like and obviously you want oils from the anointments and stuff and true generally and... actually a surprisingly high amount of six things really that's unfortunate another reason for me to wander on blight damn um but yeah right now i feel like oils where do we get oils from the best because that's something we really want to know on ssf because like on SSF, oils matter so much more than anywhere else. Because, yeah, yeah, they can be build defining. I would say oils is, I mean, blight is like a lot better now after the buff. But like, semalacrum and delirium. Oh, delirium? Would you say delirium is really good for that? Yeah, whenever you get a, um, if you're doing tier thirteen pluses and you get the uh, delirium orb that has the blight oils, yeah, I'd say right. Okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. I think that's like my thing. Like right now, it's just Q, Q and A. And anything you want to add or say, sis? Yeah. Or anything you think where I missed? I think that was really good. I, I mean, you can talk forever about this. It's hard to get. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I tried not talking about things that are probably covered and more about like, what is my approach to SSF? Mm -hmm. Because that's mostly, SSF is mostly a <clears throat> create your own experience. So whenever you ask about me on SSF, I'll give you what I appreciate from it and why I play it. And it's not always applicable to everyone. You can go very meta on SSF as well and push for bossing um, and just be, you know, um, just having slightly more restrictions because you thought the trade was too easy and play it very meta and for, for boss killing and boss rushing and accumulating currency i mean if 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 what matters to you is the number of things in your inventory i mean you can do that on ssf as well true uh how do we pick up some questions if we have time yeah, yeah just just have chat open and have people tag you and pick the ones you want to answer okay start tagging me guys if you want some question answered uh some people farming top uniques in quarry shafts wrappings is the viable strategy no no i've never heard of that i've never heard of that if you want uniques uh i have to, this is actually something and i people people laugh about this all the time but rarity on gear I, I have to say this, if you want, if you want like common or global unique drops, rarity and gear um, as a stat, if you have two items that are pretty equal in terms of power, 
one has rarity and the other has not doesn't have it if it's like a negible uh amount of like power for your character put rarity on straight up if you're farming uh, and you're going super fast and you can put rarity on your gem put rarity on your gem you you'd be surprised how much it how much it does for um for uniques now we have gold flask as well gold flask is going to be a bit weird because you're <laughs> keeping that flask up Gold Flash could be insane for killing the boss, though. Pantheon completion? I can't um, see Gold Flash being used a lot. What, sorry? I can't see Gold Flash being used a lot. No, it's gonna be like a very niche thing. To where you just want to farm uniques off a boss. Because I only see it viable, really, on... You have something that can kill bosses in, like, two seconds. So you can always pre-pop it. Yep. And so for that, I can see it being, like, usable for only farming and for only wanting to generate, like, if, okay, you want to generate alterations. Remember when Steel was doing alterations to roll and he was doing that? Honestly, for that meta, uh, that could be viable because uh, Rarity gives you way more rares of bosses. And he would rush the boss and have Rarity and he would kill the boss. A lot of rares drop, like the double boss stuff. For that kind of stuff, it can actually be viable. So there, there is there is something there. Um, for someone new to SSF, how could we choose a good build without looking at build guides? Experience. Okay. If if you want to come at PoE and you don't want to use a guide and you want to know what's good, the only thing that's going to help you is experience. You need to know. Right? So you might not know if a build is good, but if you know what creates power in builds, then you can know right so if you like for instance when i what i talked about physical dots are strong we know that physical dots are strong so generally what you want to do is you want to have some points of comparison so you look at a physical dot you see okay the phys i'm just going to refer back to the exanguinate okay the physical dot generated so much damage i know physical dot is good in general okay if it has comparable damage to other builds that we already know and they work there's a good chance that your build would work. So when creating a build, put in the gems for the other build that you don't know is meta, swap in the gems for the new build that you're trying to do, and just look at comparable no and compare those numbers. If you know that the way you apply the damage and the way the damage uh, kind of lingers on the screen and how it's like, you know, um, you know, how it's applied, how it lingers and how fast it is, if that is comparable, then you're good to go. Yeah, and Path of Exile is a game that really, really, more than most games, relies on community knowledge. Very, yeah. very heavily relies on community knowledge, where you... There's so many things you literally cannot find out without somebody telling you. So much of that in Peewee. Yes. The only way to figure it out if you're not asking people is by applying it yourself. Like, if you really don't want to look at streamer builds, this is what I have to go back to. Failure is learning. This is how this is how stuff got figured out over time. People failed at it again and again and again, and it turned into knowledge with power. Okay. Poe is a game where failure is a good thing. Anyone anyone telling you otherwise? I, I don't know what to say. Failure is a good thing. True. Yeah, like Especially it, in SSF. Like a good example, like last week, somebody in our community found the plus one recipe with gems, like for the ones cool. and stuff, and instantly shared it. That was very nice. He could yes. have like kept that and made loads of money off it. Like hundreds like of like, GCP so. men. Yeah. Most people wouldn't, probably. Can you make viewer oh, use? Yeah, yeah. Use if you if you need maps, use more currency on maps, and use side side content. And what I mean about side content is run your blight stuff, run your delve, and run your alvas if you're if you need maps and you're stuck. It really helps a lot. Yep. Uh, let's see here. How do I develop your? How do you develop your atlas? Do I rush and put watchstones and tyrants? Uh 
Or do I do first? Do I do I first do all needing two watchstones? Uh, I would say just go and learn an atlas strat. I mean, you did it because like it's just generally what you do for atlas is you do all the four outers, then you do one, two, three, four in the inners, and then you start completing, um, and then you finish the outers again. And then it doesn't matter in which it doesn't really matter in which order. You kind of just want to do adjacent uh, areas to each other so that you start feeding maps. You get the adjacency bonus, but I would really suggest if you want to learn more about this, there are very good resources out there. Uh, do you have anything, sis? On no, that, no, really. on like, okay, well then, then Carve is good on it. Um, there's a lot of standard players. I th Grimro might have some stuff on it. I mean, you guys might know a lot of other people who have like good content on this. Baylor updated, right? There, there's a lot of it gets. It gets updated a lot, and like Atlas strategies, just it takes a long time to explain. So I would say I would refer to YouTube and to just watching streamers. If you're if you if you just want to learn from others, like watching streamers as they're playing through and just asking them what are you doing now, and like just looking at the progression of someone that's ahead of you and just kind of following their footsteps, especially if they're doing something similar, uh, can be a very very good. Also experimenting and, you know, falling into the trap of, like, doing something wrong, you'll know not what not to do. And because, like, figuring out, like, what you did wrong with an Atlas strategy will inform you of, like, oh, when I do this thing, it always results in that thing, and you just completely stop doing it over time. And it becomes a non, non-issue, non a question you never ask again because you've answered it yourself. But we learn in different ways. Yep. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Are we out of time? Uh, you only have five minutes, minutes if you want. Okay, five minutes? Right. Would you recommend prioritizing a starting build that is a bosser or a mapper? Both. I would say go map. Generally, you go mapper first. And what I mean about... because But if, if I say mapper, I mean mapper that can go to red tier. So it's like you can't... A good mapper, a good starting mapper on SSF can do conquerors. It might not be able to do Cirrus or Shaper or any of the, the like the end of the line bosses, but if you can do Conquerors, and Conquerors are, uh, are are much different because you can go in with full buffs and flasks um, much easier. And if you have a good build that just bursts a lot, that can help. That can really help you. Whereas that kind of changes in some of the more extended fights to where your class might fall apart. Um, like the lightning striker was such a good example of this because it had double wall lightning strike and I could just run in double wall lightning strike and that would like take the boss if not killing it it would take it at least 50% of its HP and then you know it's much easier if by just doing that it's 50% less, less HP and just kill it normally beyond that so um, yeah you kind of want to have something that can do a bit of both you never want to have something that can't touch bosses at all I would say, yeah, a pure. Like if you're going like a lightning arrow mapper, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, can have a bad time. That is a bad time. And also, like it's very very important to have a build where, like it's it's important to be strong early. Like don't necessarily like yeah see a new skill released and you're like oh this needs like a hundred x worth of gear. Don't always start with that. Like just that's why like tried and true builds like are generally what's played the most at least or. Yeah. Like, from, from experience, whenever I say I'm going to try something new, I will always put the caveat and I will put caution into people's mind, like, this might actually fail. Like, if you are following me right now with this build, be prepared that if I'm doing something I have never done before, or that I'm not telling you I am certain that this is going to work, get ready to reroll. Like, with the Storm brand, I was 99.9% .9 sure that was going to work. And I was pretty confident in recommending that one. The EA, I was like, I tried burn before. But I was like, this could go horribly wrong, but I think it's there. It went horribly wrong. It's my worst league start to date. At any time I go burn builds, I just, it's, 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 it's my, it's my red flag. And it's any time I bait myself into, oh, ignite, that could be fun. Cause I really like ignite. Cause it's, cause whenever it works, it's really fun. 
But I've just learned my lesson the hard way that Ignite and SSF, unless you're doing an OP mechanic like Fire Burst, just don't do it. How bad can you fuck up the Atlas? Okay, so when I say... F so Atlas is... I Okay, so there's like... Let, let me let me, let me, let me find a couple of points where people fuck up the most. And I would say it's especially in the early early stage and in the late stage. Um, or it like, it's the early stage and then it can... Uh, some of the things that people struggle with probably is like converging in the... It converges on you at the very end. Um... Not the but at the end, more later stages. So the early stuff is this: completing T3 maps without having the side swords done or the the outer areas can be a death sentence. It can add so much time to um uh to your uh to your overall progression because what happens is that you're di so if you complete T3s and fours in the inner regions, it dilutes your pool from the outer regions and the thing about the outer regions is that you need to complete three maps in a single zone and you cannot go to the next zone before you've completed i believe you can't like you have to do them one at a time right sis say that again you have to do the conqueror one at a time like yeah. first it's baran then it's the next one so Yes. Once you go to the Baran zone... But then in zone, that early stage, you can do like three Barans in a row until you've killed something. Yes. But if you make the mistake After of, one of, of doing everything at the same time in the middle, and then you even like, you complete... Uh, so Baran is always the first one. Let's say you unlock Baran and then you run the other zones, and you start just running maps and completing the maps. It gets really RNG with what maps you're dropping, and you might you might have to run like hundreds of T3, T4 maps to do the three in the correct order all the way around. So be very like rush the auto zones as fast as you can and complete one immediately and then go on to the other. It's okay to like uh do like one map, um, like to complete one map in the other zone if you know that you have enough Baran maps. Like, once you know that you have enough maps to complete the area, complete the next area you want to go to, so you start dropping maps in that area. That's something I, I would I would suggest. And again, chance ops, guys. This is why chance ops are so good, because they give you these areas, like, they give you the, the outer region maps. And so Sana plus the chance ops and buying all the maps can significantly speed this up. And people get stuck on this all the time. Uh, and then secondly, I would say pre-plan your, your, um, what are these things called? Your region passives. Map passives. Yeah. Pre-plan those, so you know why you need them and when you need them. Because it, it sucks having to re, re, uh, reconfigure them. On SSF, because the orb is pretty rare. I think we have to end there, Noogie. Okay. I mean, we're always available for more questions and answers when it comes to SSF, so... Yes. Noogie, thanks so much for doing this episode of PU University. Let's get a big clap in chat for Noogie and a big clap in chat for Araki, uh, who helps with organizing everything for PU University and stuff. Thanks so much for the, the hard work, Noogie. Really good job. No problem. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, subscribe if you like the video. Make sure you check out Noogie. It's uh, Noogie on YouTube and on Twitch. And uh, really, really awesome streamer and a good friend of mine. So worth checking out. Yep. And the most important thing, try to die less than we do. Yes, exactly. <laughs>